Gary did a breakout session on uh, finding your million, million dollar blind spot. Is that right? Before it finds you. Before it finds uh. you, which I think we would all like to do it that way as opposed to the other. Much less painful. Much <laughs> less painful. So if you had one tip to give uh, our virtual audience about what they should be paying attention to, what they should do in, the audi in their business, what would it be? And you can tell them. Oh, face this way, that's the camera, yeah. The day that you stop working on the next product or service is the day your, ah, your business begins to die. Uh, That's simple. It is. And I know you shared some principles about how to find that blind spot. Can you run them down? First? I'll do it extremely at warp speed. All right. <laughs> Number uh -huh. one, you've got to know where you make your money now and in the future. Mm. Number two, what are you going to do when your customers have a change that impacts you now mm -hmm. and in the future? Mm -hmm. Number three, be it your financial statement, balance sheet, or your procedures, where are you overly optimistic that what you have still has the amount of value you have invested in it now and in the future? Number four is opportunity cost. Where could you and should you move people, money, and resources? Mm. And number five, puffery. Where are, <laughs> where are you kidding yourself or kidding outsiders? Every group I help when I do this survey, two of the five of those will impact everybody who's listening. Wow. So Gary, you work for big companies and now you consult with people of business of all sizes. When it comes to that whole financial side of keeping your eye on things, what's important for speakers? Well, it's the same ones. I looked at it, I told them yesterday, I tweaked this and made the word slightly different, but it's the same issue. A speaker, where do you make your money now and what do you need to change to? There's been a lot here about the changes in business models, much more facilitation, much more need to be able to deliver product at a substantially reduced price. And the other thing is, how do you react when your customers react? When the associations of the companies decide they don't have the money, don't want to spend it anymore. If you're not prepared for that, you've got a problem. That's excellent. So what's one piece of advice for speakers from the speaking side, not so much the financial and the planning side? You've been speaking for a number of years. You've been an NSA member for five years. Five years. years. Is that what you told me? So what advice do you have for people on the speaking side of their business? It's, I've actually tweaked it. It's the same thing. I mean, if you don't know what your, you know, the amount of time and effort and resources it takes to deliver that speech, coaching, whatever, you're going to make the wrong decision. And if you don't observe the world out there on these things with it of what's going to change, you're going to get caught because your people are going to have to cut out. You know, we're sort of like a consultant. We're nice, we're wonderful, but when times get really, really tough and you start looking around, you say, hmm, less R&D, less speakers, less coaches. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep an eye ahead that's looking in the rearview mirror back there you run over an awful lot of trash cans and objects in the road if you don't look forward as opposed to just backwards. That's excellent advice. Excellent advice. No. Well, thank you thank so Thank you so much. much for joining okay. us and for sharing no. with our virtual audience. Awesome. Glad to help. Thank All you. Right, Appreciate thank it. You. And we'll have you roll out.